I wanted to also discuss some more complex relationships. You may not need to know these for this particular class, but you may need to know them in the future. So I wanted to make sure that you were introduced to these more complex relationships. We might have a relationship that has multiple entities involved. For instance, if you're buying or selling a house, there's typically a buyer, a seller, a realtor, and a mortgage company involved. Within Visio, there's no way that we can represent these four-way types of relationships. And if we have a relationship that is more than two entities, what we're going to have to do is break that relationship apart so that we're looking at two entities at a time. So we can look at it this way, where we have a relationship between a realtor and a seller. And we can create an association table because a seller might be dealing with many realtors. A realtor is going to have many sellers. So we can set up an association table. In this case, we've created a surrogate primary key, typically the contract ID. And we have foreign keys to match that contract back to the realtor and the seller. Same thing for the buyer. The many-to-many -many relationship between the realtor and the buyer can be diagrammed as an association entity where there's some sort of contract ID as a surrogate key and a buyer ID as a foreign key to link back to buyer and a realtor ID to link back to realtor. Now the buyer has some sort of relationship with the mortgage company. And if a buyer has more than one mortgage, we need to set up an association entity again because we know the mortgage company is going to be dealing with more than one buyer. And so if a buyer has more than one mortgage, that's another many-to-many -many relationship. And in this case, the surrogate key might be called the mortgage ID. And there'd be a foreign key to match back to the buyer and a foreign key to match back to the mortgage company. So if we ever have a relationship that involves more than two entities, we're going to have to break up that relationship and deal with the entities two at a time. And in the example that we're looking at, it's particularly complicated because all of our relationships between entities are many to many relationships. So if we find ourselves in that situation, we have to create an association entity for each pair of entities in a relationship. Another type of relationship is the generalization specialization type of relationship. In this case, we might have a super type that describes a class of entities such as highway vehicles, for instance, and we might have subtypes for each entity, cars, trucks, buses, and motorcycles, as an example. The aggregation type of relationship is another category. In this case, the super entity doesn't represent the different types of subentities, but the subentities instead are components of the superentity. So for instance, if we're building our own PC, we could either buy the PC fully assembled or we could buy each of the component parts individually. And we'll take a look at these examples and show you how to assign the primary keys and foreign keys. But whether we're talking about the generalization specialization category or the aggregation category,
of relationships, the foreign key is always going to go into the subtype. So let's look at an example. We could create a super type entity called contracts because we have two types of contracts in the real estate example we were just looking at. We have buyer contracts and we have seller contracts. And this is how we would represent that. Typically they're all going to have the same primary key, the contract ID. And the foreign key in the subtype is going to match back to the primary key in the supertype. Now the reason we might want to do this is our buyer contracts and our seller contracts might have some attributes in common like the contract date and when that happens we put that in the entity that's the supertype and they might have some attributes that are unique to the type of contract like uh, who the buyer is and who the realtor is representing the buyer, who the seller is and who the realtor is representing the seller. Now you'll notice in both of these we have an attribute called Realtor ID but they really mean two different realtors. In one case it's the realtor for the buyer, in the other case it's the realtor for the seller. So our previous entity relationship diagram could be redrawn as I've shown it here. Now you notice I've asked what other entities could be set up as generalization and specialization entities. So if you think for a minute, you might come to realize, well, we have three types of people in our entity relationship diagram. We have people who are buyers, people who are realtors, and people who are sellers. Now this diagram's starting to look kind of complicated. So we might ask ourselves, is there a way we could simplify this diagram? So one way to simplify it might be to combine people who are buyers and sellers into an entity that we call client. And then have a separate category of entity called realtor. So the reason we might want to do this is there's an attribute that's only associated with the realtor and that's the real estate company. But we would typically have attributes associated with the client uh, like um, address et, etc. that uh, uh, might be associated with both buyers and sellers. Now the reason we might choose to do this is it could simplify our database because if we're a successful realtor hopefully we have clients that sometimes sell houses and sometimes buy houses and if that same person is doing both this would be a way to set up the data so that we don't have to have that person in the database twice. And that's one of the things that we would like to accomplish is if we can avoid storing the same data in the database more than once, that is going to make it less likely that if we need to change that data that some error would be made an error like only updating the data in one place instead of all the places in which it is stored. So this is one way that we could simplify our entity relationship diagram from the previous chart. If a person could be both a client, sometimes a buyer, sometimes a seller, and maybe the realtor sometimes buys and sells their own homes, by setting it up this way, we would only have to store the person's name once in the super entity table. Now when we set up super types and subtypes, there's really four categories of those. 
The first category is mandatory, meaning the only people in the database in the people entity are going to be those who are either clients or realtors. In this case, we're setting it up so that a person could be both a client and a realtor. And this is going to be based upon the business rules for a particular company whose data you're modeling. Another way to set this up is to say that there could be some people in our super type that are neither clients nor realtors. Maybe they're prospects, people that we would like to turn into clients, but they don't fit that category now. So we can say that the relationship between people and the subtypes is optional. The people don't have to fit into one of the subtypes. That's what optional means. In this particular example, the motor vehicle is set up so that it has to be a car, a motorcycle, a truck, or a bus, and it can't be both. That's what the OR means. So the mandatory says anything that's in the motor vehicle entity has to be in one of these subtypes, and it can only be in one. And the final possibility is a motor vehicle that doesn't have to fit into one of the subtypes. So for instance, it could be a boat or a plane. Uh, but any motor vehicle in this setup can only be in one of the subtypes. It can't be in more than one. So it might not be in a subtype at all. That's the optional part. But if it is in a subtype, it can only be in one or the other, not multiple subtypes. That's what the OR means. And you'll notice that all of these are represented in the similar way in our entity relationship diagram. So that's why we have to specify what the business rules are by designating whether participation in the subtype is optional or mandatory, and then determining whether the same supertype can be in more than one subtype. So that's where the and comes into place if you can be both a client and a realtor. The other situation is or. You have to be either a car or a truck. You can't be both using this particular example for setting up the data. So another way we can set up the data is the aggregation example. And it looks pretty similar to the subtype example, but it means something different. In the subtype example, all of the subentities are different types of the superentity. In the aggregation example, they're different components of the superentity. So as I mentioned, we could buy a fully assembled PC that comes with a monitor, a CPU, a keyboard, and a mouse, or we could buy each of these components individually. So each of the components would have a product ID designated for that component. And if we wanted to indicate that that component was part of this fully assembled PC, we would need a PC ID in the component to link back to the product ID in the super entity. So the reason for having this discussion is to introduce some more complex categories of entity relationship modeling. You don't need to use those more complex categories, because even if we have a four-way relationship between realtors, buyers, sellers, and mortgage companies, we can break it down into multiple binary relationships, relationships between two entities at a time. There's no one answer that is always correct when you do your entity relationship modeling. Essentially, everyone in the class is going to submit a different answer because there are different ways 
to solve the same problem.